So hey, it's uh, King Kang from FingersEagers.com, and I'm going to be working on um, this custom. Um, I'm going to try to shoot it as fast as I can so that the time elapse is not as long as some of the other videos. But what the theme on this one's going to be is um, a Star uh, Star Trek, not Star Wars, Star Trek theme, and they are going to go on a pair of Air Force One mids. As you can see on here, this particular pair. Um, it's got the rolled over leather and then it has a leather a leather midsole so um, with the Star Wars theme I'm going to be doing a full spray of like a galaxy on these and I'm going to prep them with some Angelus deglazer and I'm going to be using another product uh, for the painting process and that is Jacquard now these Jacquard paints um, are airbrush ready. They also have um, a heat setter for like fabrics um, and nylons um, and you do have to heat set it. So it's already in there. Um, if you're going to be spraying some of the nylons and stuff, sometimes I do recommend um, maybe adding a little gack or something inside of there uh, because nowadays Nike uses just a whole array of materials that um, sometimes don't like the paint to adhere so you're gonna have to do a little trial and error with that but this one's already comes ready to go to work on uh, fabrics and stuff with the the heat setting so I'm gonna um, use this product on this one and I'll be using several colors um, I'm gonna be using the iridescent electric blue um, there is also a you can also get fluorescence um, I'll try to at the end of the video try to show you guys an array of colors that they carry um, a bright purple um, and then there's a metallic blue so it'll give you a really nice coat finish um, this shoe lucky for me the customer sent it it is already white so I kind of only have to do just acetone and then uh, get ready to spray it um, the full coat spray I'm gonna be taping off the sole because I don't want to paint the sole I'm just gonna leave it white uh, maybe fade a little color into it um, but I'm not going to touch this bottom part or anything so that the customer can wear it easily without the paint rubbing off. So a lot of times you guys see online and Instagram people doing complete full sprays of the shoe and then they spray the sole and spray the midsole. The only problem with that is that after a few wears, as soon as this hits the concrete, it's just going to scup right off. Um, even if you use the Golden 200, which is a hardener, um, you could use it on the midsole to keep it from chipping and cracking but after a while um, because of the rubber flex um, the paint will start to come off anyway so this just helps keeping it stay stuck on there um, so right now I'm gonna just prep uh, the video will go silent um, I may add music to it I may not uh, just the every time that I upload to YouTube uh, music sometimes it blocks it so uh, it, I'll, it might have music behind it. so just be patient and, I, and I'll try to quickly go through this I'm also, another thing, I'm going to be using uh, Iwata Eclipse HP CS. I know a lot of people ask me about what airbrush I use. Um, this is the one that I use, and this is a lot different than a, um, this is like a Neo, see? This is a Neo. This is an Eclipse. The difference with this and this is it's a dual action, so you press down and press back. So down and back, and you can see how the flow of uh, liquid comes out of it or paint. Um, this also has an adjustment for the needle. So if you're doing a full spray of a shoe, um, what this does is it allows you to pull back the needle and uh, give the the most burst of paint out. So if you're using, um, like say, the Pro Loom Glow Colors and you want to spray them on your shoe, um, this works better with a dual action and an adjustable needle to give you the full spray. Okay, so I got all the laces off. Um, I have a big big box of cotton balls that I'm going to use. I'm not going to show you the whole video of me acetoning these shoes because that's rather boring, but I know you guys, as you're watching this, like to see that this is actually happening. Um, for people that are just starting off, they, you know, forget steps like this. Um, so I guess, there you go, you can see me actually acetoning. So I don't know if you can see, there's a little bit of white since the white cotton balls, you can't really tell. Um, 
once I've asked and told the whole shoe, I like to focus on the parts that get the most bend. Like for example, um, on an Air Force One, you get the most bends in this area here. So I wanna make sure that um, that's the part that gets the most acetoning so that the clear coat, that's the factory clear coat on the, on the leather is off. And then so that the next layer of paint sticks to it. Um, so this, this is gonna take me maybe like 30 minutes to get this, this whole thing prepped and then this other one prepped and then tape off uh, all the places that I don't want the paint to go. Um, I may drop a little bit of color here um, on this edge, but I'm not sure because I might just fade fade down some color, so it might not have to be such a perfect crisp edge at the bottom. So I'm just going to continue on with this, and then next sequence um, I'll show a picture of it or a quick little snap of, of it with the tape job, and then I'll proceed to spray color. Okay, so we're ready to go here. Um, so I do have my colors here, ready to shoot. Um, I also carry these uh, flat laces and they are galaxy themed. So this just gives you a guide of uh, basically what I'm trying to go for. So I'm gonna do a, a spray pattern and color variation that's uh, similar to this. Um, and then they'll match up um, quite nicely. So these have like a, a blue, they have white, they have some purple, they have some reds, some um, raspberry tones, some red tones. So I've got all kinds of, uh, I've got those colors ready to go. The cool thing about the, um, the Jacquard stuff is that it has a uh, shake ball inside of there. And you have to shake these for a couple minutes, but what that shake ball does is help uh, with the the pigment from settling at the bottom. So once you shake them two, three minutes, um, you've really got that, that shimmer, um, really going so you'll get an even spray and then um, a good a good finish on the uh, on the shoes so the first color I'm going to start with um, is the metallic blue so I'm just going to shake this up and get a little rag here going for when I in there. I loosely taped it. Um, the mid, the sole on these has a slight, a slight yellowing. Um, so I'm just kind of just taping it off a little bit just to protect it a little. But I think I'm going to spray once I get my full thing done. I'm just going to do a light spray at the bottom, um, just to sort of get a blend so it's not so white. Uh, but I'm not really interested in painting that part solid, um, so it doesn't flake off that easy. So this looks like it's ready to go got the airbrush and then what I do recommend you doing is take a little cotton ball um, and some acetone or deglazer whatever you have available and then just quickly just clean off the little top here so that none of that dried paint um, gets into your gun and gets it to, to clog and of course lube and clean your airbrush to make it easier when you get started. So now that it's shooken up, I'm just going to squirt my color in. I'm going to do a quick test down. As you can see, it's spraying. Um, and then I'm going to proceed to spray. So I'm going to do a very, a very light coat. Just a very, very light one. I'm not trying to cover, I'm not trying to do anything, I'm just trying to get a base to where the paint can adhere. And this has a, it's a metallic, so it has a little bit of shimmer um, to it. So to me, that's a good, quick base coat. And you can see that that's already emptied out really fast. So what I'm going to do is blow dry this just to get this color to set. I'm going to put a little liquid in here, a little airbrush cleaner, because um, I don't want um, it to, to dry. Um, so I'm going to blow dry it real quick. I'm going to show you that I'm going to blow dry it. I want you to see that I'm doing that. 
and then um, I'll move on to the next step. So I'm gonna blow dry this guy, okay? Okay, so this, so I kinda cheated. There's now two coats on this. So I'm gonna keep spraying a little bit. I've already dried. As you can see, the, um, the metallic blue, so this is on the third light coat. As you can see, it's already starting to go solid. And I try to do, when I do these really light coats, I try to work into the crevices. Um, like the the seams and stuff. I try to go in there first. Or like the little crown holes. The air holes. Because I'm really interested in getting all the little crevices. I'm not really interested in getting like the most perfect even spray. Just want to make sure. And then uh, I'm going to start. So I'm going to do this one. I'll leave this one. Let it dry. I'm going to put a little tape on the other one and then I'm going to quickly spray the other one too. And then I'm going to start adding the color switch. Um, right directly into the airbrush. Um, actually, I have to, I have to remember you got to shake these. So the next color that I'm going to be using is the iridescent electric blue. And you, you'll see as soon as I spray it, the, the difference um, as it starts to shift. And then the color after that, or simultaneously, I might simultaneously just add it as I'm going, is the iridescent violet. Okay. So I'm going to get make sure I get these. Sorry, I'm trying to get the cameras. Okay. So. In here, there's the metallic blue, and I'm not going to dump out. I'm actually just gonna shake this up, and I'm going to add the next color directly into there, which is the metallic, or actually this is the iridescent electric blue. And I'm just gonna spray down a little bit to make sure the next color goes. And you're gonna see how this is gonna change rather quickly um, because of the electric blue is a darker tone than the metallic one. Um, and I'm just going to watch the amount of color I have in there and then um, it's going to work pretty fast I'll go back and touch up the liner a little bit I just want to be able to Work fast. Okay, we've uh, put in the iridescent violet into the airbrush, and I'm just going light, to lightly spray in certain sections. it's only going to give a fade of black not an opaque which opaque means like solid going to cover you can't see through it transparent lets you give a light mist and uh, the colors you can see through it so i'm just going to quickly just dump that into here and uh, start to give it some dark some dark highlights there 
and you can see it. Seems like a lot, but when I back paint more of the other colors, it'll be okay. So this color I am going to dump out. Um, I don't really want that much of it.
here in this sequence, um, I've already done uh, the drawing of the Spock on here. And it's going to be in a very painterly artistic style uh, on here. And it's not going to have like skin tones and that kind of stuff. What it's more going to do is it's going to have a, a blue a blue glow to it. And I'm going to be using the King of Sneakers um, Pro Loom Glow Color. Um, it's the aqua one. And the cool thing about this product is that it, it glows and it's also a color. So it's going to uh, give him a glow effect. Uh, so I'm just going to full spray him and then do a, a fade on the outsides of him. And then maybe go back and add a little bit of some highlight colors into him um, to the Spock character on this side.
there's so many things that happened between one sequence and the next sequence that are just um, it would just take too long to show and not show. Uh, so I did the phase, and then I added the noise, and then I added the burst of light. Um, there's just a lot of things going on there, but I just I did want to show you an update of how far I got on the Spock. Um, I'm going to add the word uh, Star Trek here. I did add their little um, command symbol there. I might do a little more because it's not it's pretty basic there. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna add anything on this side. And I think it's pretty cool like that. It's it's for a guy, so I don't think it should have uh, too much more going on. Other than the wording. Um, the customer does want a particular symbol that goes here, and I have to add that to it. Um, so that, that's an update on that. So here right now, I've just taped off. Um, so I'm using the Pro Loom Glow in the Dark Aqua Color on there. I cut a little sten a sticker stencil that with the word Star Trek, and then um, I just taped off all around it so that I wouldn't get the extra overspray on it. And I'm proceeding to add light coats of the Pro Loom, and then I'm drawing in between each coat, and then I'll keep doing it over and over until I feel I've got the most coverage. Uh, I'm trying not to do too much. Because I don't want it to, um, I don't want there to be too much of the of the pro loom on there and then have it seep under. So, so this is what it looks like uh, when I tape off for doing like the light burst, which I did here on this one. Um, and then all I do is uh, add a little bit of white. I do the opaque white um, to the airbrush. And then I want to just lightly mist it. I do want to add just a light mist. And then just go more more solid when it would be closer to where, in this case, where the image is going to be. And then I do a little bit. And then I'm also going to do a light uh, jabbing at the airbrush. Light jabbing gives me that little speckly drip mark. You can also get the drip marks um, if you were trying to get like the galaxy bursts, uh, the nebula. What you do is you can take a brush, make sure there's some paint in there, just kind of saturate the bristle. And then what you're going to do is just get real close to where you want it and then flick it. You see how that does it? And flick it wherever you think you want a little burst and then you can do, if you want a lot of noise a lot of white noise, you can just flick it around there you see how that is and if you want to get it on this side here so here's what they look like now that they're done spin them around I wonder if I can see if it glows it's kind of hard to grab stuff glow on a camera like this. Well, you can kind of see it. See how it glows a little bit. Once it gets charged up, you can really see him glow.